layout, um, remember how we said we just got to center of our wall or our run distance, and that's where we're going to center a. So this is our center line right there. We're going to want to center a two by right on that. So uh, three quarters each side of that center line, of course, and that would be the same. On, that would be our king common coming right off the end. And that would be the same that we have here as well. So it would be 29 and a quarter. Remember that was our effective run. It's the end of the ridge. So um, 30 would put us right in center. We, uh, I set this up when we were doing our, our gable roof. So now to, to run these guys, uh, you need your king common. And... Uh, just uh, put in the center common. Should be right if uh, we plumbed up everything correctly. As you guys notice, I'm not nailing everything off. We have to tear this mock up down. And, and so I'm just kind of doing things real lightly. Okay, um, I, I didn't mention, but the proper alignment, pretty obviously, for a, a common rafter so it planes in with this edge of the hip, but I mentioned it right now. What I like to do, I should have said, I like to get a three-quarter line uh, on uh, both sides of the 8-7 hip valley seven twelve. I, I like to get a, a three-quarter line on each side of the hip in from my line length line. For the simple reason, it just helps me line that guy up. So I have a mark there and a mark there, and that'll help me line up again. bottom but it uh, so it's got this pencil line there is on the edge you can lift these guys up a little bit so you can always tap them down uh, edge here edge here we're good and I'm just gonna do one maybe I'll do, I think I should be all right now put another one on this side like I said I'm not doing correct nailing I'm just putting them in Got our two lines. I'm just going to line it up one side and the other side. So that's where heel stand, common raft, heel stand comes right across right there, equal. Heel stand, common raft, right, right there. In good shape. Now up at the top, just tap it down till you. Uh, flush right out with the common on this side and that side. I have to take one of these things off, so I'm going to shoot it in here. And I'm going to shoot this guy in this way. Remember, this is the side that we were going to step off 8 inches from the common rafter, so let's uh, go ahead and do that. Here, I'm going to butt the common rafter, so I'm just going to be there and back, uh, 16, and back, 24, right here, and back. Uh, you'll notice I put a block in here to plumb this guy up, get it uh, nice and level, and you'll see it, it's nice and uh, level, nice and plumb. You'll see that's what we did that for. Remember I said you need to do that. This. Uh, I should look from the top down. Uh, we look pretty straight on this guy. So it's nice if you uh, can think of it as, you know, to run the bow out one way or the other way you want to start from. It's a lot easier to push it. So if you're, if you're stacking uh, left and right side and it's kind of bowed a little bay this way, well, start on this side because then you can, with your first one, push it back to straight rather than starting where the curve is. Oh, we got to pull it back. No, it's easier to start on that side. Yeah, we got a straight one, so we'll go. Typically, you'd run one in the middle and then uh, straighten it out, a pair, one here, one on the other side. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to start right here and, and uh, go. Well, actually, since I'm going for the King Common, I'll stack from the King Common. So uh, it makes more sense, more sense to you what I'm doing. Got a nail there. I'm just letting that fly for now. And I can't get the gun in there, so we'll go from the other side. Uh, 
Now all you got to do with these guys is just line them up on that edge and uh, go uh, nail them. This is here's a good point. Uh, the nail, a lot of guys don't nail in correctly. You want to uh, come back. You want to be perpendicular to the hip. So you're going to be about you know two and a quarter inches back, right? Uh, and that's where you're going to shoot through. You want to be as close through the thick part of the wood as possible. This one I did a little bit off because it's difficult to get in there. But uh, in this case, we'd have another one, but I'm only just tacking this stuff, as we said. So I'm going to be about two inches, and I'm going to go perpendicular to the hip. And we've got this guy set up. Go ahead and do the other one. And this side now steps off from, I've got that little flyer in there, as you can see, the little flyer jack. And this one steps off from uh, that flyer. So we got eight. We got 16. And we've got 24. And, and back. Okay, so do the same thing here. Did on the other side. Go ahead and shoot them in. Left handed on this guy. inches back, a little tight for this gun, got one in there, line it up, right flush right there, should be coming through that thick part of that jack, this side I didn't put a little block to plumb it up because it was pretty plumb to start with and I really wanted to just show you as an example, uh, question is uh, how to lay out the hip, uh, that would be if you were to get your calculator, uh, rather than asking a uh, seven inch pitch, about eight inch uh, run, we just asked for the hip valley. So it would be 12, 12.23, 12, and uh, that would be our layout on the hip. We usually don't really even need that because these should line up automatically if you've got everything done, but let's just go ahead and check that. So that's 12 and a quarter right there, 12 and a quarter right there. So if you had to, mostly, we'll get into that when you're in the advanced tape, the only real time you need to lay out the hip uh, is when you're in a run hip valley jacks because they have no point. They just fit between a hip and a valley and step up. You'll notice uh, back, well, can you get me a square block, just a little one over there. Um, remember what I was talking about in, uh, in blocking, if, if this was uh, the west coast, how much easier it would be to... Uh, run a block if this was uh, the way it is versus the other side and I'll show you that in a minute I'll just go ahead cut a block and you can kind of see I'm going to cut a little shy of the measurement so it'll slide in very easily just for demonstration anyway six and you'll see what I'm talking about as far as that freeze block You can see how much easier it is to run this block um, square to the rafter as opposed to, I'll just shoot it in, I got the gun right here, you can kind of see what, I'm, what we're talking about. Okay, so you can see how easy that was to put that block in versus coming over here now and uh, having to put a square to the rafter block in there. I mean, that's got to be a 40, uh, it's not a 45. But you can find those, this would be a square hung in the, in my roof gutter secrets. You could actually get this off a chart in the back. Uh, what this, what 
this line is across the face and what the bevel angle is, but it's time. I was quite quick to put that in. Uh, if you're, you know, just running blocks up on top of the walls, then it's not a big deal because that's just a 45 degree cut. And you can just drop that block in. And, uh, you know, as they were saying back east, they don't even have, you don't have to worry about this because it's soffited and um, down here. So you prefer to go from the King Common.